Hello everybody and welcome to my 81st VBA 2010 tutorial. Um, this tutorial is going to show you how to work with numbers uh, in your um, in your SQL queries. So I've created a new table. Um, this table uh, is just a sales table so it's got a list of sales. I haven't put much information in because again you don't need that much yet. Um, and then it's just got the date of the sale, how much the item's worth, how many were sold, and the customer ID, uh, just to link it into our users table. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write an SQL query that will bring through all of the sales that are have multiple items. So let's go into our code and just clear out that and go into our VBA and I'm going to create a new sub. So let's get rid of the one from the last tutorial. So sub and I'm going to call it load multi sales. And the first thing we're going to do is create our variables. So SQL string as string and dim rs as object. Uh, and then we are going to write our SQL string. So equals, and we start off the same as normal. So select, and then we want to select from our table, we want the sale date and the item value and the sale quantity and in fact we just want all four of the fields so customer ID um, I could have just put in a star, but I'd probably still leave them like this anyway, just in case your table, say I want to change this field and move it over here, this is still going to work later on. So it's worth putting in the field names even if you um, are putting in all the fields. So from sales where... And then now we're going to do our comparison against our text field. So we just want to say whether or not it's greater than one. So we just put in our sale underscore quantity and then greater than one. Uh, and notice two things here. So where I've normally been using equals, I'm actually using the greater than sign. Uh, and similarly, you can use a less than sign, you can use a doesn't equal sign, uh, you can use a um, less than or equal to sign, and uh, greater than or equal to sign. Uh, so I'm going to use the less than, uh, the greater than sign even, so let's get that right. And the second thing to point out is that I haven't put in any apostrophes around the one. So if you put apostrophes, it's going to treat it as a text field, which is not what we want to do because I've got a number field in here, or at least it should be. Let's just check that. And uh, I'll put it in as a um, text field. So let's just change that. So that's a number now. Save. Let's close. There we go. So that's now a number. So let's now continue with this. So this is going to give us, and let's just take these apostrophes out. So this is going to give us all the sales where there's more than one item being sold. So let's just finish this off. So let's put a uh, cool connect database, which is the function that we created in tutorial 70 something one I think was it uh, and then I think it was 71 yeah and then we're going to create our record set so set rs 
equals create object adadb dot record set and then rs dot open db count uh, and then I'm just going to put them onto the screen. So for i equals one to rs dot record count. Next i rs dot move next. So just repeating what we've done in the last few tutorials again, uh, and uh, then we will put with this workbook dot sheets sheet free and with and then dot cells i one dot value equals rs zero copy that and I need four of them because I've got four fields this time. So you just put in all of those indexes and all the columns. And then finally, just make sure we do rs.close and set rs equals nothing. You'll probably notice that if you forget to do this, your code will still run. But what you find is sometimes because you've left the record set open, when you close the connection, the connection will stay open. And if you've got a large group of people all using your database, that can cause some quite serious issues. So always try and remember to close off your record sets uh, and set them equal to nothing. Um, and that just makes sure that any connections are closed down. And then we can just call close database. And then that should be it. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to tidy up this a little. So I'm just going to make it go on to the next line. So ampersand underscore. And that just makes it a little bit easier to read because it's on an extra line. Some people like to put all of their different SQL keywords on different lines. Um, but I just do it as kind of a bit uh, as I please. Um, I have seen some really nice tidy ones recently where people put them the different ones, so I've been considering changing to it. But um, just do whatever everyone else who you uh, work with does, really. It's the easiest thing to think of. As long as you're all doing it the same way, it doesn't matter. Um, so let's press play on this now. And uh, it's going to come up with an automation error, which is not what we wanted. So let's step through and find out what's going wrong. So it's going wrong on the SQL string. Uh, and it'll probably be that we've spelled something wrong. So sales. Uh, Let's try now. Nope. We just pause it a second, I'll be back once I've figured out what's going on. And the problem is because where I put it on an extra line, I forgot to leave a space in. So it was treating customer ID and from all as one word. So try not to make the same mistake I have. So we press play now and then go to our worksheet. And you'll notice it's brought through the two records that have the user ID, uh, the, not the user ID the sale quantity higher than one. So that is how you would use numbers in your uh, SQL string. Just remember the most important thing is for text, you use uh, apostrophes uh, and for or single quotes and for numbers, you don't use anything. You just put them into your code, such as in the example here. And um, that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use dates. And just a reminder, if you do want to uh, have all of this code or the database samples, um, if you just pop onto our website, uh, yourprogramnetwork.co.uk, 
um, it'll be in the link from the video and just scroll down underneath any one of the videos and click on this download button uh, and you'll be able to get a zip with um, all of the uh, all of the um, samples in it and it'll look something like this and you can have all the things like that uh, so feel free to download that uh, completely free if you want to make a voluntary payment then then do but otherwise don't worry about it um, and yeah so have help yourself to them uh, helpful for coming along gives you the uh, connect to the database um, modules uh, and also gives you the sample databases that I've been using so yeah check them out uh, worth a download if you're following these tutorials, which I'm assuming you are if you've got to number 81. So thanks for listening, and I hope to catch you in the next tutorial when we're going over dates.